and gentlemen to what if news I appreciate you being here please tell a friend and please share subscribe like hit the bell for notifications comment whatever today I am going to do a history lesson on how capitalism is a very good thing this story actually means a lot to me in a different way uh, several different ways. One of the ways that it means a lot to me is that it is literally an experience in my own life that I am able to tell you and put a story behind it. But first, a word from our sponsor. This segment of What If News is brought to you by Noble Gold. Protect your retirement with a gold IRA. Noble Gold is who I trust to do just that. Protect my retirement. It's springtime. Time to get the lawnmower out. Maybe do a fresh cut on your yard. Maybe plant some new shrubberies around the house or plant a garden. You might enjoy doing those jobs, but if you don't or can't, you're going to need to pay someone. And that takes money. Let's face it. Putting money aside for a comfortable retirement is the only way you're going to get out of doing the lawn yourself. That way you can visit the kids, hike that trail, or play golf like your friends are doing. Noble Gold can help. By investing in precious metals along with other investments, a gold or silver IRA is a great way of doing just that. And this month, Noble Gold is gifting a genuine, rare Carson City minted Morgan Silver Dollar with every qualifying IRA or 401k. So get in touch with the experts at Noble Gold at noblegoldinvestments.com or call them at 877-646-5347. Call them at 877-646-5347. That's Noble Gold Investments to protect your retirement. All right, so this story has to do with the town that I grew up in on the west coast of Florida. It's interesting to see how this story has all sorts of interesting uh, attributes on how history works. I don't know everything about this situation, but I can piece together an interesting story. When I was younger, my father started a business. Uh, we had a bobcat skid steer where we did demolition, property cleaning, dirt work, land clearing, you name it, we did it. Bobcat, three dump trucks. My grandfather, who is, uh, who is now almost 95 years old, he'll be 95 in July, he actually used to come down in the winter and, you know, help, so forth and so on. But recently, we were having dinner with them, and I brought up the fact that I was driving dump truck. 
uh, when I was like 13, 14 years old. How this conversation came about was that my son is about to get his learner's permit. And I just happened to tell him, hey, I've been you know, driving a dump truck since I was that young. And my grandfather chimed in and I said, man, every time you got behind the wheel, it didn't scare me about your, your uh, driving, you know, because I'm a good driver. I've driven millions of miles and knock on wood, no accidents. But my grandfather, he was always worried because, you know, commercial vehicle and so forth and so on. But anyways, back to the story. My father, he always put hard work and dedication into showing me how to be a man as I was growing up. And one of the ways that he did that was that I helped him after I got out of high school in the afternoons and through the summer and so forth, operating the business that he started when I was 13-ish, 14, something like that. Uh, it was a great honor working side by side with him. He taught me how to operate heavy machinery, uh, drive dump trucks, hence, you know, being able to drive semi and so forth and so on. My driving technique and skill is because of my father teaching me how to drive and I just, you know, made it my own. But we, uh, we used to clean up a place called Ringling Towers in a town called Sarasota, which in 1950 uh, looked like this. Well, the interesting story about Ringling Towers is who owned it. The person that owned it was John Nicholas Ringling. He lived from May 31st, 1866 to December 2nd, 1936. He was an American entrepreneur who is best known for of the seven Ringling brothers, five of whom merged uh, the Barnum and Bailey Circus to their own circus, Ringling Brothers, which had the terminology the greatest show on earth one time behind my grandfather's house down there in Florida uh, there was railroad tracks it's not there anymore but there's railroad tracks and one of the last trains to go down that track was the Ringling Brothers circus train I one time in my whole entire life seen that firsthand well, the capitalism that happens with this gentleman, and keep in mind this was a little bit after uh, Edison and uh, Westinghouse and, and all the pioneers back then that, you know, had a monopoly on electricity, had a monopoly on uh, trains, had a monopoly on the steel corporation, and so forth and so on. So here's where this whole entire thing gets interesting for me. John Ringling Towers which are the pictures that you are now seeing, used to look like this. It was ran down and overgrown without a shadow of a doubt. It attracted uh, homeless people. They were living inside Ringling Towers. We had to clean up inside. Uh, we had to clean up the grounds, do bush hogging, which is, you know, cutting tall grass and so forth and so on. And in its heyday, the Ringling Towers was absolutely the place. The architecture is amazing. And I say is because in these pictures that you're seeing, uh, you can tell the architect uh, architecture of the building. And I've seen it firsthand. I've been inside the building before it got torn down. And Ritz-Carlton sprung up from the ground. We'll get into that and, you know, the whole situation. But they bought all kinds of circuses and they did indeed create a monopoly in the circus world, okay? Uh, but something else that's interesting is the fact of being part of the circus and owning every circus there was in the United States at the very end, everything that was circus-wise was owned by them. Uh, John, he met and married 
Mabel, which became Mabel Ringling. The reason why I'm talking about this is because of the simple fact that the Ringling Brothers Circus winter quarters were in Sarasota when it was in its heyday. And in Sarasota, you can go and see the museum, you can see the grounds, you can see uh, where uh, John and his wife and his sister are buried there on the property. Um, interesting story that I'll get into in just one second about how that happened. Uh, the art museum is absolutely amazing. The pictures don't even do it justice about how amazing this place is. When I was younger, they used to have the medieval fair there, where you would have live jousting, you would have uh, one of my favorite games to play is chess. You would literally have live chess being played on the grounds of uh, John and Mabel's estate there in Sarasota, which is located at University and 41. You can't miss it. If you ever go to Sarasota, it's well worth your while to go there and see the grounds, the art museum, uh, Catazan, the circus museum. It's all right there on the grounds. But the thing is, is that he married Mabel, okay? Uh, then the uh, brothers bought the Barnum & Bailey Circus for $400,000 from the estate of uh, James Anthony Bailey and ran the two circuses as separate entities until the end of 1819. John worked the circus and his brothers uh, declaring, we divided the work but stood together. John took the advanced position, traveling and uh, traveling ahead and booking the appearances for uh, and Charles. His other brother was the operating manager. In the end, John Ringling Towers, also known as Ringling Towers, wound up being demolished and torn down for a corporate conglomerate. When we were cleaning up the property and keeping it, you know, as much up to date as you can, there was a nonprofit organization in which they are who hired us to, you know, keep the grounds looking much better than they, you know, had for a long time. The nonprofit had enough money raised to restore that building to its prime, which probably would have been pretty amazing because, like I said, the architecture and in, in, in the pictures, you can tell. You can tell by the... the Catazan House, the mansion, the art museum, how spectacular the Ringling Towers really were in its absolute prime and could have been brought back to its prime. But the city of Sarasota decided that they wanted, you know, a much bigger place there, which in comes Ritz Carlton, which, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful hotel. It's very, very elegant, I will tell you that. So, I mean, to each its own. But, you know, capitalism built it. The original building that was there, known as Ringling Tower. In the end, they wind up with a art museum, the Catazan, the Circus Museum, beautiful grounds that used to hold amazing events there. They still do, but, you know, as far as I know, the Medieval Fair hasn't been there since 96, 7, probably. But John Ringling has a bridge. It used to be a drawbridge, which led you out to the most beautiful beach in the, my opinion, the world. But when I lived there, I hated it because I didn't like sand. Loved the salt water, hated the sand. But, you know, they wind up tearing down the towers, they wind up tearing down the bridge, building a real nice, beautiful bridge, and what was built at the towers is what changed the skyline of Sarasota forever. So here's where this becomes interesting to me. And this is what I actually didn't know until I actually looked it up today because I wanted to do this 
and figured out that there was a big gigantic capitalism racketeering racket going on that's that's what America's founded on entrepreneurship people getting their elbows greasy getting their hands dirty building something that you can leave for your family and your generations of family and so forth and so on so John Ringling died on December 2nd 1936 in New York City he was the last Ringling brother to die, as well as the longest lived of the Ringling brothers. He was the only brother to reach his 70s. Once one of the world's wealthiest men, he died with only $311 in the bank. When he was doing circuses, they charged a penny per person to get in to see the circus and built a fortune but apparently had bad outcomes of how things went. But it, it turns out that bad fortune led to something that winds up being amazing, minus one fact. We'll get into that fact here in a little bit. So he died with only $311 in the bank. At his death, he willed his Sarasota mansion and museum and his entire art collection to the state of Florida. The House Catazan and the John and Mabel Museum of Art offers a glimpse into the lifestyle of the Roaring Twenties and a re-owned, uh, yeah, re-owned art collection. Another of John's legacies is the uh, Ringling Art Museum and Design, which I've had friends that have been to there, graduated from there, and they are designers for interior, uh, which asked to adopt his name because the culture influenced uh, of the museum and its collection. The museum devoted the Ringling Brothers Circus has been established on the estate also. After his death, the, uh, service, uh, the circus was operated by his nephew, John Ringling North, who sold the circus to Judge Roy Hoffenzines, sorry, I'm mispronouncing it, but whatever, of Houston and Washington, D.C. promoter, uh, promoters Irvin Field, and Israel fled in 1967. In 1991, John and Mabel Mus uh, Ringling and his sister Ida Ringling North were exhumed from their original resting place and reburied at the John and Mabel Museum of Art in front of, in front of, and to the right of Canazan. It's called the Secret Garden, and John is buried between the two women. The Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus eventually closed after 146 years of operation in the face of two uh, weakening attendance, animal rights protests, and high operation costs. It performed its final show on May 21st, 2017. You know, they bought up because of charging one cent. This is how capitalism works. This is the entrepreneurship, you know, 146 years worth of business. He might have had $311 in his bank account, but he had assets. Assets that were willed to Sarasota County, which they built 146 year business started with one penny per person and were able to accumulate massive uh, real estate deals in Sarasota for instance the museum there's other places uh, he had to do with the Yellowstone Railway uh, he owned all kinds of railways because of being circus that's how they got to point A to point B to C D E F through the whole alphabet okay uh, so when you wind up charging one cent and having packed houses every single show, um, I can't say every single show, I'm sure that it was full to say the least. I've been to circuses 
and it's you know I'm sure many people have circuses are fantastic to go see minus certain aspects of it but back in the day this was your your top-notch entertainment for your family everybody wanted to go to the circus and a lot of people did because they built an absolute amazing business uh, real estate railway all this stuff that winds up being funded by capitalism where they put on a show for people to go see and got paid one penny per person is how they started where there's a will there's a way and if you have a dream you continuously dream about your dream and make strides to make your dreams come true that's the American way ladies and gentlemen it's been tried and it's been true you can't let people change the narrative of our country for over 200 years does every nation have flaws sure they do but the biggest flaw that we have are the people that operate this country that are allegedly representations of you and I capitalism works high debt as a nation is not a good thing at all high debt is what winds up crumbling countries and the people that are in charge normally don't get hurt by it it's we the small people the middle class the you know poor people they're the ones that get you know affected by it you take away jobs creates issues you take away people's money and finances creates issues you try to force narratives on them creates issues people being able to freely think for themselves is an important fact of life and the people that don't think for themselves and let people tell them what they should be doing when they are being told what they're supposed to do but by people that aren't doing what they're being told to do by them you know what I mean Gavin Newsom Cuomo the list goes on and on and on go to a you know hair salon get your hair done and then be I got set up no give me a break looky here looky do do as I say but don't do as I do what can you do ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching this video if you want to hang out I'm gonna play all these pictures so you can see them one right after another I don't know maybe probably five seconds per picture so but ladies and gentlemen my father taught me how to work how to be a man what to care for you know it's it's all about what you think you want versus what you are told that you want how do you how do you circumvent the two being free and able to make your own decisions and choices is what makes that life possible of freedom can't let freedom go away because once it's gone it's really hard to get it back just look at a dog for instance okay a dog might think oh man it's a great idea to go run off what happens when uh, animal catcher gets the dog the dog goes to the pound and the dog is like man this sucks I just wanted to go outside and run around and my nose led me here and well crap I should have stayed home 
See, that's the dog thinking that he has freedom and it winds up getting him where he doesn't want to be. But when he gets back, he's like, this is good. What if the dog couldn't be found by, you know, its original owners? Hopefully it wouldn't be one of those dumb people that is like, oh, let, let the dog go, whatever. Mm. I have problems with that type of stuff. But just saying, you know, dog thinks it's freedom running around and then gets snatched up by the dog catcher, goes to the pound, and then winds up back at a house where his food and water is, and he's like, man, I can just run around here in the yard. You can't let your freedoms go, ladies and gentlemen. Once they're gone, it's doggone difficult to get them back. Prepare yourself, whether it's emergency food supply, getting your finances in order. At some point, the pendulum's gonna stop swinging. Or at some point, the pendulum will start swinging a completely different way, like it had been. You know, you have, you have four years of low unemployment in all demographics, stagnant wages went out the window, taxes went down for, you know, we the people. Taxes went down for corporations, which made corporations want to come and invest. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. I'll see you next time.